Hello everybody, uh, my name is Martin. I'm an Inkscape developer developing features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. I'm here in sunny, no, rainy Torquay. Uh, I'm currently doing some traveling, um, so I'm not able to give you an update from my home computer. Um, so hopefully you can enjoy the weather along with, with me while we talk about some of the Inkscape stuff that we have gotten onto this week. Uh, first of all, I want to give a big shout out and a big thank you to all of my sponsors. Uh, basically, my work on Inkscape is paid for by you guys. Um, I'm currently doing the CMYK work and uh, I really need help uh, from sponsors to be able to continue to, to do it. Um, so what I want you to do is please spread these videos as much as possible. Uh, the more people that I'm able to reach, the more of them that will um, choose to basically participate in my Patreon or my LibrePay. And hopefully we can raise the number of hours that I'll be able to work on the CMYK stuff. Um, we need to get this finished, I think. People are excited about it. And what I don't want is for us to sort of run, run aground in terms of resourcing. Um, and with your help, I think we can do it. So social media, um, comments, blog posts, whatever you need, whatever you'd like. And uh, yeah, thank you very, very much for your help. Okay, so let's talk about some of the work that I've been up to. Uh, despite being on holiday, I have actually been doing some pro programming. First of all, um, as you know, I've been doing the CCMYK work for quite some time now, and I haven't really been able to share many of the developments because they're kind of boring and kind of like un under the hood. Uh, but I think this one that I've been doing these past two weeks is something to share and something that you'd be interested in. So you know the fill and stroke dialogue? Uh, where you can choose the colors. That's called the color picker. And when I was doing the refactoring, my intention was just to sort of go in there and uh, change it a little bit so that it was using the new color code that I've already written. The problem is, is that as I was doing that work, um, the fill and stroke dialogue uh, code, the, the bit that's specifically to do with generating color gradients for the color bar where you select the color, um, things like the color wheel, and especially things like signaling, all just sort of like melted away as I was uh, refactoring it. This sometimes happens in pro programming when you write a library and the library do is like a really solid piece of code that can uh, handle a lot of the assumptions, a lot of the functionality that previously was done ad hoc. And I didn't quite realize just how much ad hoc code there was in the Fulfill and Stroke dialogue. Uh, but as I worked through it, and uh, we ended up moving from like 1,000 lines of code to like 200, um, I realized just how much of the, um, the assumptions that we had built into the Fulfill and Stroke dialogue uh, I was actually going to have to change. So this does mean that in the future we're going to have to actually test the Fulfill and Stroke dialogue hard to make sure that I haven't broken anything. Um, a good example of the thing that I'm, I'm being conscious of is the fact that in the gradient um, selector, there's a there's a feature that allows you to jump between different values in 16 blocks uh, if you hold the control key. I didn't know that feature existed. I'm not sure if very many Inkscape users do know that that exists. If you do know, please let me know and let me know what you think of it and if you use it. Um, because now I have to make a decision about how to implement that in the way I'm doing the color management stuff. Because if you think about it, doing uh, red, green, and blue is easy, right? There's 256 values within red, 256 values in green, 256 values in blue, and then splitting those into chunks of 16, that kind of makes sense. That's a good, you know, hop. But if you're doing something in CMYK, in an ICC pro pro profile, then it's kind of arbitrary what the maximum value is. Technically, it's between 0 and 1, but most people don't think about it 0 and 1. So we can decide, okay, we're going to chunk it into 255, and that's okay, I guess. But then what do you do for um, HSV, for hue, saturation, and val value? Saturation and values are usually uh, 0 to 100, typically. Uh, but hue is usually calculated in degrees, which means that obviously it doesn't use 255, it uses 360. Uh, how do you chunk 360? Uh, 15 degree inc increments? 60 degrees? Um, I don't know. So I need to, uh, if I want to add that feature in, I need to basically bake all of the assumptions for every single one of the color models that I've now developed. 
especially cho choosing them when you're using ICC pro profiles. Uh, this is details though, and this is exactly why testing will be so important. Um, but I'm super happy with the code in terms of its signaling. I'm super happy with the rendering. Uh, before, it was doing a lot of looping in order to draw pic pixels every single time. Um, and it was a lot of manual grunt work that was going on inside the widget code itself, inside the fill and stroke dialog. And now a lot of that code is just normal color conversion code inside of the new co the new color model. Um, sounds like I'm describing the new model army. Um, but yeah, so so the, the new code handles like a lot of that work. You know, we're just going to let that ambulance pass. And I can actually have a think about what I want to say. So we're well on our way to being able to, um, uh, you know, do the color picker properly. Each one of the color modes that you'll be able to select from should be able to select uh, not only what you're selecting the color in, which is what we've typically done, but you should also be able to select what color will be saved into the file. Um, that's not something we have typically shown in the user interface. And I'm thinking that what I should do is I should make it so that the tabs that say red, green, blue, CMYK, etc., that they should go bold when that's the color that you're actually saving in, as opposed to the color that you're just picking in. Um, but I haven't completely decided. If you're a designer and you're interested in this one particular issue, uh, user ex experience, get involved. I'm super interested to hear your feed feedback in terms of what kind of design we should do. Um, and that's really about all I've gotten up to so far. Um, you know, it's been it's been a struggle to maintain the the momentum for the color work, but I'm cognizant of the fact that people are excited. Um, everybody is really interested to make sure that like the CMYK stuff for Inkscape is awesome, and I I feel it. I want to get this done, uh, but it's it's going to take a lot longer to do, unfortunately, than I had anticipated. And I can see us not being able to deliver it until, you know, maybe the first testers will have it by summertime or autumn time, um, but hopefully not. Uh, and then maybe a full release next year, next April. But we'll see. You can always you can always use what I've created so far. Um, it's just going to be un unstable until we've had all of the, the requisite checks. Okay. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, I hope you're as excited about CCMYK as I am. And please let me know in the comments what you think and how you're getting on. And I will see you all next week.